because I'm too far away. <laughs> So what song are you singing today? Is there an angel in there? So, we're in chapter 20, and we have two more problems to do, and then we get to go to chapter 21. And of course, those two problems will probably take an hour apiece. So uh, I'm looking at number 39 on page 700. 713 and a quarter. And I'm hoping I don't have to solve too much. Determine the value of the voltage gain. Okay, so I've got um, absolutely no help here at all. Um, so my my first answer would be one that would be my first answer this is a, a common base amplifier. It's supposed to give me power. And it's not supposed to give me a voltage gain. So that would be my first. Um, so if I was doing it on a multiple choice test and I had answers of, of 100, 150, and 0.99, I'd, I'd pick the 0.99. Really, they don't want us to do something clever like that. They want us to do a calculation. So that means we have to find the right place in the book where it tells us what it is. And that appears to be page 685. So the voltage gain is going to be RC over RE prime. And okay, now the issue would be how do we do that? So RC is going to be RC in parallel with RL. So the, um, the collector is there. So that'd be um, 1.5K, 5.1, 5.1K in parallel with 10K. Okay, so I want 1 over 1 over 5.1K plus 1 over 10K. And that's going to be somewhere around 3K, right? So I'd get out my calculator, 1 divided by... 1 divided by 5.1 plus 1 divided by 10. Now we'll call it 3.4K. 3.4K. All right, now we have to figure out what little re is. Little re is um, 250 millivolts divided by IE. So now we have to figure out what IE is. Well, maybe not. <laughs> so maybe, do we have voltage in on this guy? We have no idea what voltage in is, right? Uh, Absolutely not. Yeah, I don't think we have much of a choice there. So um, we'll go back to little RE prime, 250 milli volts divided by um, IE. So now what is IE? I have 12 volts there. I'm going past him. I'm going this way to ground. I'm ground there. I got a 0.7 across here. Yeah, I don't see it. Do you see it? Twelve volts. No, 
It's not 12 volts. Minus of 7, is it? 11.3? Well, we'll do a we'll do a voltage divider. That's what we'll do. So we we know that 12 volts has to equal 0.7 plus I E times nine. Is it nine ten? Yes. Plus five um, point one K times I C. We know that that's the case. All right. And we know that um, IE is IC plus IB, right? Um, hmm. Well, these guys are about the same. IE is about the same as IC. So we'll go with that and we'll say IE is equal to 12 minus 0.7 divided by um, 910 plus 5.1k. So I think that would be a reasonable thing to do. Um, except I don't have 510 written very well. Yeah, that's bad. So 11.3 divided by 0.9. Well, that's dumb. 910. Plus five one zero zero. Yeah, that's good. So I've got one point eight eight milliamps. So a little R E prime two fifty millivolts one point eight eight milliamps. Thirteen point three. So now I'm going to have voltage gain. If I could spell voltage gain properly, which I obviously didn't. So voltage gain from page six uh, eighty five is uh, R C over a little R E prime. And um, anybody remember what R C was? 3.4k. 3.4k divided by 13.3. 255. Well, needless to say, I don't like that answer. Common base oh. amplifier. <clears throat> well, I guess we'll go with it. Um, next problem. Well, why don't we do something different? Can we build the circuit and know what the answer is? Hmm. Same problem? Yeah, same problem. I built the circuit. What transistor would do we want to use? Um, that guy? Is that the right guy? No, that's the wrong guy. That's the wrong guy. Um, what transistors do we normally use? There we go. That's better. That's the wrong guy. Um, yeah, that's the guy that we'd normally use. Okay, so we use a normally used guy, and then uh, we got to go in and uh, do something with him. Let's see, we're going to 
rotate him that way, and then we want to flip him that way. Okay, so I got him in. Okay, so now we're big enough so we can see it. Um, two resistors, three, re four resistors. One, two, three, four. And um, how many grounds do we want? Three. One, two, three. Um, it doesn't tell us the size of the capacitor. Is that a problem? Yeah. Or are we going to just better live with that? Um, what do we think? Probably, um, probably uh, one micro. Uh, so that's probably okay. Two of those guys. Anything, do I need anything else? And I need a power supply. I need two power supplies. Oh, look at that. Minus two volts. Did you see the minus two volts down there? Yes. You know what that means? That means our calculation was wrong because we didn't have 12 volts. We had 14. Oh, bummer. Oh, well, we'll have to solve that later. So um, we need a uh, VCC and um, a VEE. That sounds good. All right, so I got enough parts? All right, so if I have enough parts, that's all that matters. I still need an AC thingy, though. We'll worry about it later. All right, so um, this guy is uh, 100. And then that guy can go there. And this guy is 910. And he can go there, and then um, we'll put one over here. One five zero zero, and then we'll put this guy out there. And then I'll drop him down. Change him to twelve. Thank you very much. And change this guy down here to um, minus two. And while we're at it, we'll flip him around the other <coughs> side. Okay, now we need a ground on this side. All right, now we're going to hook up wires. Wire, wire. This guy gets goes directly to ground. Yes, sir. Oh, excellent. And now we need an AC signal, and we're almost there. Now, if I have two hundred volts, two hundred. If I if I'm gonna going to go in and uh, have a gain of 200 and something, I better have some PS signal going in, right? 0 0.001. All right. And then I ought to be able to see something coming out that's, that's pretty big. All right, so um, we'll just use a voltmeter. Okay, so I want to see 255 millivolts coming out of this guy. That's what I'm looking for. And if I do, then I'm happy. And if I don't, well, that's not bad. Um, looks like we're only off by a mere <coughs> 100. Right? 
only off by a mere hundred. So that's that's not too bad. So I wonder what we did wrong. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was expecting a gain closer to one, and I got a gain at 255, and that's why I said to myself, self, you're hosed. That's not right. So what are we going to do? Huh? So I'm on page 685 again. R1 resist. Back to the original problem. Determine the value. Well, I think we're there. We know what it is, right? So we'll just, yeah. We'll just use the red ink, cross that one out. And then we'll say, um, the um, if I could spell it, gain of the voltage is um, V out 1.219 1 1.9 milliamps divided by 1 milliamp um, uh, 1.22 yeah I think that would be reasonable anything else is that the same? no everything else gets crossed out in red <laughs> want me to do that too? All right, cross all this out in red. I'm using pink though, magenta. So we'll cross that out. We don't care about that. That one's wrong because we had a minus two volt thing there. Uh, this guy's probably not right either. But this was correct. I got the RC right. So uh, that's correct. And um, that would be right if we could have calculated it correctly. All right, but I, I like I say, my uh, if it's a multiple choice thing, I'm going to pick the answer closest to one because it's a common base amplifier. Um, number forty-three. Oh, this is this is just Marvy. Going to take me at least the rest of the day to draw the picture. Right, determine the values of V, C, E, Q. Forty-three. Um, the voltage at base 1 and the voltage at base 2 for the amplifier in the middle. V, C, E, Q. <coughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, I'm not going to draw the picture. At, uh, well, maybe. I, no, I'm not going to draw a picture. I'll just draw whatever part of the picture I need. Okay. So, first thing I'm going to come up with what V, C, E, Q is. And that's going to be um, VCC divided by 2, which is um, 8 divided by 2, 4 volts. And I'm, I'm getting that from uh, page 6, 91. Okay, so that was easy. Now i got to come up with voltage at base 1 and voltage at base 2. So if I look, I've got um, 8 volts. I've got a resistor. I've got a diode. I've got another diode, I got another resistor, and I have ground. And I have voltage at base 2, and I've got voltage at base 1. I have 0.7 volts there, 0.7 volts there. I've got 2, 2, 0 ohms there. I've got 2, 2, 0 ohms here. So the current flowing in this circuit is 8 volts minus 1.4 because I have two diodes divided by 4, 4, 0 ohms. What number are we doing? 43. 
four, eight, 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 yeah, eight, minus 1.4 equals divided by four, four, zero. So I've got 15 milliamps flowing in the circuit. So the voltage here is going to be eight minus 220 ohms times 15 milliamps. And um, the voltage here will be um, 15 milliamps times 220 ohms. Okay, so I'm all set. 8 minus 220 times 0 0.015, boom. 4.7 volts. I lose a 0.7. I lose another 0.7, that's 1.4, I'm just going to subtract 1.4, 3.3 volts. Okay, so 0 0.105 times 220, oh, 3.3 volts, yes. So, but once I have that guy, then it's easy to get the other guy. All right, now we, we're done with chapter 20. <coughs> which is the easy chapter. Now we're going to go to chapter 21 where the price of Jeopardy doubles. And we, we end up working real man problems instead of these kitty problems. What? Where we, yeah, where we have to use an Excel spreadsheet to have a chance of getting the right answer. Yes, yes, that's, that, that's true, okay. So uh, the issue is, where are my transparencies for this class, I wonder? And uh, there they are. So chapter 21. We're running out of chapters. You notice that? We're going to be done with our chapters at any moment. And then everybody will be so sad. And then what are we going to do? Finish off your labs. <laughs> Starting with the ones you didn't do last semester. <laughs> yeah, you skipped over. All right. So now we're going to do with field effect transistors. So now we're we're moving, yeah, we're moving out of the World War II era of transistors, and we're moving right up into the 1950s with with field effect transistors. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is you're just going to have some P material or some N material, and we're going to put a gate around it that's going to be the opposite type of material. And we're going to create a channel, and we're going to pinch off the channel. When we, when we put voltage at the gate, we're going to pinch off the channel so no current can flow. So that, that's our plan. So there's two types. There's um, a junction field effect transistor, and there's a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, a MOSFET. So the MOSFETs are the family of transistors that allow us to do uh, the computer stuff that we do. Without them, our power density would have been too large and we wouldn't have gotten past the, the 46XDX processor, which happened when you were in kindergarten, right? For all of, except a couple of us, happened when we were in 10th grade probably. Um, but there's two basic types. And of course, they're gonna be, um, going to do things different. I'm going to have a drain and a source. My current goes from the drain to the source. Okay, so we, we name these guys drain and source before we decided that we're going to have positive current flow. If we would have named them after we decided we're going to have positive current flow, we would have named them something else. There is going to be uh, basically no current that leaves the gate. So there's no current going through the gate. It's just going to be some voltage at the gate causing a field to form in the N or the P material, causing it to um, do whatever it does. So I've got N channel. I'm pointing in. i got P channel. I'm pointing out. So the drain is like a collector. The source is like an emitter. The gate is like the base. Why didn't we call them that? I have no idea. 
somebody did it. And um, now we've got, uh, so we have N channel, normally requires a positive uh, supply of voltage. The current is obviously going the, the wrong way in my picture. Um, we'll go and, and move it over and have the current flow the right way. So my current is going that way and my current's going this way. As my voltage on the gate increases, my channel gets smaller. As my channel gets smaller, there's less current flowing. So here we have a picture. I'm at, I'm at zero volts at the gate. I have a big channel going on. I have lots of current going. I, I'm, in, I'm making my voltage be more negative at the gate more negative at the gate and now I'm pinching off. We call that pinching off the channel. No current flows at minus four volts on the gate. Maximum currents flowing zero volts on the gate. Um, I can do the same thing. I can have a I can have a differential voltage across the, uh, the the drain the source with the voltage at the gate remaining the same, and if I do that, I end up pinching off the channel as well. So I can pinch off the channel with voltage at the gate. I can pinch off the channel, changing my voltage going drain to source. Now these look very much like the characteristic curves we had in PNP transistors, um, but in, on our other transistors, as the current at the at the voltage at the base went up, I ended up having more current flowing. Now with the the uh, I'm going up, but I'm going up from a negative spot. If I get above zero, it, it's not going to give me any more. So I have a, a constant current region that I go across. I have, this is be my characteristic curve, and I'm going to have an AC low line going in there too. Ohmic region. I have some resistance change being caused. Some constant current change, and then I go in the break off. Pinch off voltage. VP, constant current region between VP and the breakoff voltage. Um, if I short the gate to the drain, I get maximum current flowing. My voltage gain, gain to source is zero and uh, VDS, the voltage uh, drain to drain to source is going to be my pinch off voltage. I have some current drain to source when I'm in saturation. So there's some maximum current that can flow through this guy. Um, and this is similar to the IC sat in the in the in the binary uh, junction transistor guy. I've got some gate to source cutoff voltage. Some, some voltage that if I put it at the gate, I'm going to cut this guy off. At that value, I have uh, essentially zero current passing through the drain. So VGF off is uh, the same magnitude as the pinch off voltage. So if I'm, if, I, if I'm minus 8 volts VGS off, then my pinch off voltage is going to be 8. Um, drain source junction. Never allow this to be forward biased. If I do, I'm going to destroy the component. So if I design it to be forward biased, it's just going to blow up on me. I have to do it again. Reverse biasing a, um, a uh, junction field effect transistor 
gives you extremely high gain impedance, typically uh, in the high meg ohm range. Now, this is the equation that we're going to go and put into our spreadsheet to find what it looks like, because we're going to need it to draw curves using that equation. And uh, so I got uh, the current going through the drain, current drain to source in saturation, one minus whatever the voltage is divided by the voltage at the gate uh, cutoff squared. So that's something that, that we're going to need five, six, seven, eight um, numbers from. In order to be able to draw the curve, I have to draw the know what the load line of the transistor is. So there I, I did. I used that, that uh, equation and found one, two, three, four, five points on it. Well, I only found three, one, two, three, because I know uh, VGS off is minus six, so I, I know that point already. And I know that IDDS is three milliamps, I know that point already. So I would have to draw, um, I'd have to get enough data so I can draw that curve. Now how much do I need? Now we're technicians, three points is good enough, right? So now I've got, got N channel and P channel uh, JFETs. And um, I have pinch off voltage, I have voltage at the gate, and I have voltage uh, at the gate, gate to source at cutoff. All right. So now how are we going to bias our um, field effect transistors? Okay, we're going to have to bias them somehow. So we're going to have some uh, VGG. And whatever that voltage is, is going to, going to make it to there. There's going to be no current flowing through this guy. And then um, VDS, VDD minus whatever that guy is. Uh, well, uh, maybe I can do that. Now, we need to um, have a stable Q point. So again, gate, gate bias is not going to provide that stable Q point. Uh, so if we're going to use a gate bias thing, which we just saw the other thing, we're going to use those for switching operations. Switching operations means on, off. We're not going to use them as, as amplifiers. Uh, Self-biasing, more reliable biasing. Um, this is my, my AC look at what's going on. This is my DC look at what's going on. And, um, and uh, how am I going to handle that, I wonder. So self-biasing. We're going to plot the minimum and maximum transconductance curves. There we go. Spell transconductance for me. Right. So, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Transconductor. So, obviously, somebody got their Greek involved in this, right? So when when we we were uh, back, so move back. That is a transconductance curve. It says so right there. How come I didn't say it before? So that's my transconductance curve. That's the minimum, that'd be the maximum transconductance curve. I got a minimum transconductance curve to put in. And then I've got some load line that's going to go in. And I'm going to be on the load line. So that's, that's my plan. I'm sticking to it. All right, so here we are. And so I, I calculated, I used the formula twice, one with a, a VGS of minus 8, one with a VGS of minus 2, because my VGS can go between minus 2 and minus 8. Um, I know 
my IDSS is going to go between the 4 and the 16 that's given to me. And now I draw my two charts. I find my two Q points, one for minimum, one for max. And now I have a load line going through those Q, two Q points as, as I go uh, back and forth on, on here. I go up and down on there. And now I get some voltage going through the drain. So that's the whole point. Voltage divider basis bias. Okay, so now my, my voltage at the gate is um, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So my normal voltage divider network. And now um, I find that if I use voltage divider bias, I'm going to have to use a graphical procedure to find ID. Isn't that lovely? We're going to have to plot the transconductance curves. We're going to have to calculate the voltage at the gate. We're going to have to plot the voltage at the gate versus the x-axis. We're going to have to, to um, do all kinds of cool stuff. So here we go. I'm using voltage divider curves. I have some voltage at the gate, a point that I know about. I know this point. I can find those two Q points once I have plotted my two transconductance curves. And then all things being equal, I go back and forth across that load line. Isn't that wonderful? Does that make any sense? Don't tell me it doesn't because I know it doesn't. Tell me it does because then I know you're lying to me. <laughs> okay, but that, that's what we're going to have to do in the homework. We're going to have to the plot transconductance curves and the way we're going to get the data easily is using our spreadsheet to calculate it for us. So we don't have to put it in our calculator multiple times. Every time we put it in our calculator, we're getting a wrong answer. That wouldn't be professional. Okay, so my, my voltage at the gate is going back and forth. And my change in the current uh, drain to source is going to be just that little itty bitty bit. And the, the Q point is going to be much more stable than my other two ways of doing it. All right, so here we go. Um, gate bias, extremely simple. I got a line going straight up and down between my two Q points. Um, self bias, I end up going through the origin. I like that. And voltage divider bias, I end up having a curve that's a little bit different. So voltage divider bias, I get the least gain. I get the most gain when I go to um, the, uh, the gate bias. But I'm still, I'm going to use my gate bias and my self bias guy basically for um, um, switching circuits. And I'm going to use voltage divider bias if I want to have some amplification going on. Okay, notice that my, when I'm common source, so this is a common source amplifier. My source is, is common to ground. Uh, I am out of phase, 180 out of phase. Similar to common emitter. All right. Overview of operation. I got a transconductant curve. I have some voltage going in to the gate. I have some voltage going out uh, right there that is going to be in phase. I have voltage up here that's out of phase. <coughs> All right. Hmm. The transconductance is a ratio of the change in, in uh, the uh, current at the drain versus current source to uh, gate to source. So this is a given value, GM, and it's measured in micro semen. Isn't that good? Or milli. Micro, micro moles. Notice that that's not ohms sitting there. That's 
moles sitting there. I like semen better. That's much better. Okay, with a little bit of duck luck, we'll be. Pronounce that again? Which one? <laughs> moles. Yeah. Sort of like hoser, only different. Yeah. So I, I end up. I know my GM. It's a change in IDIS, and I end up. I measure it, and now I, I can figure out what it is. But in this example, it varies. So it changes as I move up my transconductance curve. Because it is, in fact, change in y, change in x is what that is. It's the slope of the curve. So the slope of the curve changes as I move up the curve. It's not a straight line. Oh, bummer. And I can calculate it uh, with an equation. So that's always good. I have some maximum value that happens at V naught, and I can find the rest of them by using a equation. Isn't that lovely? And my amplifier gain, whatever that GM is, times RD, the resistance at the drain. Okay. But the, but the amplifier gain is unstable because GM is unstable, is changing. All right, hmm. Amplifier voltage gain continued. Okay, so I've got a common source amplifier. I go when I write it's G, it's a AC configuration circuit. So these guys are in parallel with each other. I just stick it, stick it there. These guys are in parallel with each other. So I stick it there. I have a ground going for AC. So I can just go directly to ground. That looks good. Swapping. S swapping reduces the effects of the variations of GM. So what did I do? I added another resistor, RS to reduce the effects of the variations in GM. Isn't that lovely? So now my, um, my voltage gain RD divided by RS plus 1 over GM. Isn't that lovely? I wonder if I'm ever going to remember that. All right, somebody check the syllabus real quick. See how far we're supposed to go today. Well, I figure, um, are we there yet? Hmm. Maybe I should work a homework problem. The way, oh, the good news is, uh, do we have, are we off on the 21st and 22nd? Yes, we, yeah. Wow, that's cool. No, that's cool. Next Thursday and Friday. We are? wonder what I'm doing. Yes. Yeah. It's not spring break. No, spring break's not till March. Yeah. Yeah. There's supposed to be a student day, so teachers can work and practice. Everybody gets a day off now. Oh, okay. So I'm supposed to. No, it's I'm supposed to. And faculty oh. no. So I'm supposed to do something to make your life miserable during those days and days no, to come. No, you're taking day off. Oh, I enjoy life. No, you do that every other day. Yeah, I know. I, I don't yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah. Well, you no. All right. So we're going to look at homework problem number five. <laughs> Who made this stuff up anyway? Does anybody know? I don't know, but I'm going to shoot him when I was in uh, uh, that guy. <laughs> okay, so I know that IDSS is uh, 120 uh, is 12 milliamps, and I know that VGS off is minus 10 volts, and I know that VGS is minus 4 volts. 
and I want to determine the value of ID. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I know what we're doing. You're not going to like it. So I'm looking at page, uh, some page, I don't know what page. There we go. I'm looking at page 707. And I find on page 707 that ID is equal to IDSS 1 minus VGS divided by G, VGS off squared. And I find that I know IDSS, I know every single variable in the equation. So I can calculate ID. So ID, the current through the grain, grain is um, 12 milliamps, 1 minus, minus 4 divided by minus 10 squared. Okay, so I got 12 milliamps times this is uh, two tenths, two, four tenths, right? Four tenths, point six square. <coughs> okay. Twelve, no, twelve times point six squared equals four point three two. Uh, I got seven point two milliamps. <laughs> Are you hosed? I got 4.32. I got 4.32. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Point six <laughs> squared <laughs> times point zero one two equals yeah, I'm still getting the same thing. Yeah, I, yeah, that's right. I don't know how you got your answer, but I'm going to reject it totally to my brilliant answer. If you break it down, Stephen, 12 milliamps. I got the same answer you did, but then I did it. 0.36. So about a third of that is a quarter, so I'd expect. Yeah, a third of that is going to be four, so I'm a little bit bigger than four. So my answer looks right. Like you probably didn't square the six. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what you did. You didn't square the point six. Yeah. Exactly what you didn't do. All right. So we can actually solve a problem in this particular section of the book. Okay, well that was good. We're going to move on to third. Seeing that we're on such a roll. What was the answer? Can you go back to it? 4.32 million. That's it? That's it. Yeah. 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 So, uh, final answer, 4.3 milliamps. We only have two significant digits, right? So, there's only two significant Really, we only have one. But, uh, 4.3. Yeah, 4.3. No more, no yeah, no more, no less. All right, so now we're looking at number 13. Determine the value of ID in VDS for the amplifier down below. So I got um, 10 volts 
I got one lousy resistor, 3K. I got this guy, and I'm grounded there. And I have one mag. And I've got um, minus one volt there. And, and VGS off minus two. And IDSS is uh, six milliamps. Okay, so this is the same problem we just solved, right? Yeah, exact same problem, except uh, we go one more step. So we um, we have to come up with ID. All right, so ID is IDSS one minus VGS divided by VGS off squared. Okay, so I know that this is uh, six milliamps one minus. And I know my VGS off is minus 2. So what is VGS? Minus 1. Minus 1. Why? Well, because no, no current's flowing through this guy. If I got minus 1 there, I got minus 1 up here. That's why. Squared. All right, so I got 6 milliamps times that's a one half so this is a one half one half squared so that's six over four milliamps um, 1.2 1.2 milliamps so ID 1.2 milliamps and we're halfway there now we want the um, Voltage drain to source. Voltage drain to source. Wow. What? How did I misspell source? Voltage drain to source. Okay, so I got 10 volts. I've got a resistor, 3K ohms. I got uh, this transistor sitting here. And I got the what, who, where? I'm just drawing my picture. Thank you. Am I done? Yes, sir. How long ago? All right, now I know I've got 1.2 milliamps flowing in that circuit, so I know the voltage across this resistor, whatever it is, 3 times 1.2, 3. Point six volts. So I got I got three point six volts across that resistor. What's the voltage drain to source from there to there? Well, it has to be ten minus three point six, which is uh, six point four volts. And now we solve two problems in the same day. Let's see how lucky we are with nineteen. Determine VGS, ID, VDS for the circuit on the next page, which is described in problem seven. Can we go back to problem seven and see what is there? If there's anything there we really care about. Problem seven, blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay, yeah. Everything's, yeah, so problem seven is what we need. Okay, right, gotcha. No problem. All right, so here we are. What are we doing? Number 19? Number 19. Did I say that? All right. So I've got uh, 12 volts. I've got 3.3K. Uh, I've got something that looks like that. I've got 1K. I have um, five point one meg, 
Okay, and I'm grounded on both of those two. I go back to problem seven, and I find that V G S off is minus a half. It's not very much. Well, it goes from minus a half to minus four. Minus four. And that um, I D S. S I D S S goes from four to ten milliamps and I get the distinct impression that I just wrote down everything for number eight. Is that what I just did? All right, so we'll We'll get rid of it and we'll try it again. This time we're going to do it for number seven. And it says VGS off goes from minus 0.3 to 3 volts. And IDSS goes from 1 to 5 milliamps. Okay, so I got a minimum maximum range. Okay, so I come back to the picture that I'm on. Determine the ranges of ID okay, and VDS and everything else. Okay, so uh, ID max. ID max, um, five milliamps, five milliamps, yeah, five milliamps, one minus one minus. Hmm. Is it VGS over G? It's VGS off on the bottom, right? So it'd be uh, minus 3 on the bottom. But what's on the top? What's VGS? figure out what it is it's going to be square I know that is it zero it might be zero it might be zero Is this a self biasing guy? No, we don't want to put any stop in any recording. Put a one in there? <laughs> well, it can't be one. It can be many things, but it can't be one. Okay, I'm on page 714. I'm looking at a very similar thing. Is 
So now the issue is what is VGS is minus 4. Figure 2117B. VGS is minus, minus 4 is chosen as a random point to calculate it. Um, use two sets of value to transfer our plot is shown, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So it looks like we're, um, the issue is we need to plot the transconductant curves. That's the issue. And without them, without them drawn, we can't solve the problem. So that's what we're going to have to do. Okay. So we're going to go to our spreadsheet. Maybe we are. Um, why don't I see Microsoft Excel? Is it some office? It's an office. Oh, office, right? All right, Microsoft. All right, all right. So I'm in Excel. Okay. All right. So what I want to do. is I want to find I want to find um, um, IDSS I D S S times one minus Um, VGS divided by VGS off squared. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for right there. Okay, so we're going to put um, in, uh, so we're going to put v, VGS in this spot. And we're going to put ID, ID in that spot. And then we're going to calculate um, B, B3, B3 times 1 minus a3, A3, divided by B, G, S, off. All right, well, we can't do that. Okay, so we'll go in... Uh, we'll put... Um, V G S off right there. All right, now we're ready. Uh, we want this to be um, bummer. We want this to be I D S S I D S S. Okay, and then this is going to be my ID column. All right, I'm, I'm set, I think. Um, B3 times 1 minus A3 divided by C3 the quantity squared. <laughs> Copy. Paste. 
Okay. Now we're all set. Anybody know what we're doing? No. Oh, no. No. What problem are we on? 19? Uh, 19, I do know that. All right, so we're on 19. All right. So we go back to our problem, and we're going to go point minus 3 and 1 milliamp. Okay. So we're going to go minus point 0.3. And one milliamp. One milliamp. Okay, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to have um, minus 0.03. Is it called is it called abnormal? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Minus zero. Minus point zero zero five. Minus point what are we going between? Point three. Okay, so point three. Minus minus point three minus point two five minus point two. Minus point one five. Minus point one. Minus point zero five. Okay, and then on the top end, we have 5 milliamps and 3 volts. Point zero zero 0.005 minus 3. We're making our transconductive curves. That's what's going on. That's right. You're going you're gonna to have to do it. You don't have a choice. Okay, so we're going to go <laughs> minus 3, <laughs> minus 2.5, minus 2, minus 1.5, minus 1. <laughs> Minus point five. All right, and we'll go to zero. Zero. Okay. So now we have all the data we need for our transconductant curves. Now the issue is. How are we going to uh, <coughs> how are we going to plot them? Um, this is my so I want a graph of that guy versus this guy, and that guy versus this guy. Hmm. So, um, probably want a, a line. Yeah, I probably want a line guy. And, um, and, 
Yeah, we probably don't want that. Okay, now we want this to be the other axes. Okay, so that's not doesn't do anything. So we come on this guy. Well, that's that looks nice. I think I know what we're doing. can't I get why can't I cut and paste that in um, okay we'll try this Yes. All right. So we got our, we got our data in. And um, now we got to use it. Okay. So we're gonna make a graph. Boom. Boom. One. Two. Three minus 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 point three and my ID goes up to five milliamps. One, <coughs> two, three, four, five. Five milliamps. One milliamp. I have a point there. I got a point there. At two, I have um, a half. So minus two, I'm here. At minus one, I'm at 2.2. 2. I'm there. Okay, so there's my one. Okay, so that's my first curve. Now my second curve goes at point three and goes to one. And we'll pick uh, halfway between is point is a quarter. So halfway between is a quarter. So it looks like that. Okay. Excellent. A lot of work. Well, yeah. Now, where are we going? Anybody know? Find the ranges. range. Uh, 
from 0 to minus 3 volts. ID range. It looks like it's one to five milliamps. V D S. It looks like I could do this without doing what I just did. <laughs> Okay, so the voltage drain to source could be 12 volts minus 4.3K, 4.3K times 5 milliamps. That would be a large number, a small number. Our VDS could be the other side, 12 volts minus 4.3K times 1 milliamp. Okay, 12 minus 4.3 times 5. Hmm, minus 9.5 volts seems a little big. 12 minus 4.3 7.7 volts hmm nope I don't think so not good not good NG no good no, no. What am I looking at wrong? No, that's not right. Um, we're going to pick a point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a point right here at minus 1.5 volts. And then I'm going to take that 1.5 volts and I'm going to divide it by my voltage gate which is 1.5 meg, 5.1 meg. No, I just think we're giving up just so. All right, well, I think we'll come back to that one.